Welcome back to Strong's Garage. Yeah, another day in paradise here with Matt and Jim. Yep, we're here to uh, do another, uh, we're here to dazzle you with another brake job. Exactly, yeah. So we went through the algorithm and we saw, okay, people like 32 Fords, people yep. like grain trucks. It seems to go hand in a glove. So say if we combine the two. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's this uh, 1932 Ford BB, one and a half ton. We use it for yard driving and picking up things and hauling oh, yeah, grain. Little... Farm festivals and yeah. moving dirt. But uh, now it's time to get it on the road, actually. So we're going to take the steps of, uh, you know, going through it and getting it road ready. Oh, yeah. Turn it into, you know, just that kind of car. A nice One of those and just, yeah. where you can just hit the old uh, button, the whole pedal. Yeah, hit the old and floor. And it uh, button. takes you to town at 35 miles an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's the truck. Yeah. Yet yeah. another truck. Yeah, one, one and a half ton. Yeah, one and a half times the truck of a uh, one ton, I guess. Yeah, this is a Ford Model BB, and it's a uh, four-cylinder powered unit. Yeah, no fooling. It runs in yard drives, but to get it on the road, we're going to see what it's going to take. Hey, well, the biggest problem is the uh, kingpins are shot. As you can see, you got a little bit of a wheel slop. Yeah, that's definitely worn out, no question. But other than that, it seems pretty darn nice. Spins nice. Yeah. Oh, a moth came out. All the original paint, them uh, wheels, eh? Oh, not as easy as the other side. Oh, because these are left-hand threads. Yeah, yeah. Of Smarter than the whole works, eh? Okay, we can edit that out. There we go. There it is. Brake rod fix. Oh yeah, look at that. Point to the sky. Sweet. Probably worth uh, it's easy to learn on because everything's a little bit bigger, it's easier to handle, and then you can oh, switch to yeah. a smaller car. Or at least our plan was to do this giant brake job and stuff before we do Jim's Model A because it'll be like uh, you know. Like oh, nothing at all. Quite easy, yeah. yeah. We'll have big muscles from this, yeah. yeah. Alright. Just use the old crest yeah, around here. Forefathers. There you go, my friend. Good. I've caught the rag in here. There we go. Oh, you think you'd learn? <laughs> now we'll be careless and the bearing will fall to the floor and you know. There we go. Perfect. Oh! Just in wonderful shape. Yeah, the whole thing, the brake wise, is pretty good. Oh, well, there's a uh, there's a 100% chance that this is his bestest brake lining material yeah. because this brake job was probably done. Uh, I don't know. Well, before 75 the, years ago. Yeah, before the Second World War. But. Uh, what we do if we uh, encounter old brakes like this is just wet everything down really good with some bar salt or something. Yeah, brake clean, whatever. Avoid blowing it and just uh, rinse it away and try not to, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. avoid your lungs from intaking any and then you're uh, usually pretty good. But it's really neat. This is just a giant, we did that 32 Ford car brake section. This is just a giant version of the same wedge, 
Same rollers. If you're interested in how mechanical brakes work, we did a video a while back on uh, a on a theory, 32 Ford. Theory of operation. So this yeah. is exactly the same, just three times the size. Yeah. It's kind of neat. So we'll get this uh, cleaned up and whip the back and plate off, and then we'll pull the uh, pull the spindle, get it ready for uh, kingpin yeah, action. Yeah, kingpinning. Yeah, here's what we're up against here: some uh, road grime and gunk. That's just chipping it away with a miner. <laughs> Trying to get at these uh, cotter pins. Lovely little cotter pins, yeah. Beautiful. There, we're gonna get at it now. I found gold, the nut. Oh, ah, yeah. It's completely encapsulated, and yep. you can see. Oh, yeah, there it is right there. Yeah. That's wrong business. Yeah. These old trucks drive like junk, is what people <laughs> say when they drive them like that. Start at the top? Yeah. Rock and roll. Uh -huh. There you go. Oh. There we go. And have a look at these gross little buggers. Oh man. The one interesting thing to know that this thing is well greased at one time in its life. However, in the last probably 70 years, no one's greased it because it has all the original grease nipples, which are these crazy. Nobody has that gun anymore. They seem oh, to be all yeah. intact. So. But we'll get her removed now. We'll take the spindle off. And first, we'll, we need to clean off this dirt and then we'll get to. Tool from the board! Yeah, the tool of the day. Okay, let's take those cotter pins out. Yeah. I'll remove this one and you can remove that one and we can have a cotter, uh, showdown. Oh, the old cotter, cotter pin showdown. Pin showdown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, summer cotter pin challenge. <laughs> Here we go, my, uh, my entry. To the yeah. Cotter pin. Showdown. Oh, I don't even have this groove chipped out yet. See? We've got these uh, beautiful snap-on uh, antique uh, vacuum grip uh, side cutters that work a uh, treat. And they uh, do the job. What are you rolling with, Jim? Oh, well, here we've got some, uh, it's a gray B18, Canadian made, uh, yeah. They've here. got the USA made uh, snap-on vacuum grips, so we'll... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I have next to no grip, so. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Oh, that's not fair. You're quite a bit smaller than mine. <laughs> there we go. Time. The one because uh, mine broke off. <laughs> there we go. Okay. The trade pins. Should we just uh, show the size difference here, just so it's not a complete? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it was there was a bit of a handicap here. Okay, I see, I see. Yeah. Anyways, Jim one. Okay, let's go get a tool off the board. There we go. At the tool board, the tool yeah. crib, hey? Eh? Tool crib. Yeah, so what the tool we need to do that is, this one will do the job. We got one that fits on a ratchet too, but this is a nice old one. Let's get a look at that. Her brand, hey? Eh? Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Smoky Lake Ford strikes again. Yeah, looks like it's got every square in the yeah, square. county area. Yeah. And the one we're gonna need here. Oh, oh, the big flat. Oh, the tool board strikes again. You're good. So the really cool thing about these early tie rod ends, if you haven't seen them before, is uh, that they're rebuildable. So from Model A to 34 Ford used uh, these uh, these kind of tie rod ends, you know, not the throwaway type. So this is that flat, just fits in there. These are adjustable, you can tighten them and loosen them, depending on your ball. So we'll just get this taken off, you see? Oh, a wondrous tool. Yeah, it works, works, works a treat. Yeah, there no. is ones that fit on a ratchet as well. I, I think lots of cars had these kind of big giant flat things, but yeah. Uh, and with a screwdriver, you don't have that uh, mechanical advantage. No, sir. Yeah. And it doesn't have the width or oh, the breadth yeah. To, yeah, yeah. to handle that. It slips out and you'll see they're always barked up. But a lot of this stuff I don't think has ever been apart, which is pretty cool. So we're the first foray into losing all the pieces. <laughs> so what you do is you just loosen it and then it pops right there, boom, Perfect. there it is. So 
as you can see, is a bit dirty. This is a grease seal. Goes on first. And then this ball here. It rides on this tie rod ball. Hey. Oh yeah, look at and that. it's in good shape. It's not, sometimes they get flat. You know, the more you tighten them, oh, the more they flat. Yeah. And I can show you in here what it is. We'll clean this all up, but it's a, a ball socket. Oh, yeah. And then in here there's a plate with a spring behind it. And it just has tension, so you yeah, just tighten against it. Ending, yeah? yeah, so kind of neat. So there's our tie rod. Now we just got to remove the steering, and we should be able to remove this kingpin. Well, what you do is you take this lock bolt out here. It's all caked with junk. Can you see it in there? Oh, yeah, there it is. So we'll just, oops, we'll just loosen this. And what it is, this is a tapered pin that holds the kingpin in place. So yeah, I'll just yeah. give it a... There it is. As you can see, I used the nut, I hit the nut, so it shouldn't... Uh, I'll, I'll chase the threads, but see it's tapered. Oh yeah. And it fits in that hole, and then once we get the kingpin out, you'll see where it goes. So now, sometimes these are a real bugger, but uh, hopefully this isn't too bad. Yeah, this one's been so lovingly greased. It's been greased! So this is our actuator here. See how it works? The brake rod comes in, pulls. Yeah, pulls and pushes. Yeah, it pushes down on this little rod, yay. It runs for the hole in the kingpin. And on the little wedge. Yeah, pushes your wedge and yeah. there you go. There it is, so there's that. So now we should be able to just ease this out of here. Get one of these. There you go. Oh, Need the right tools. A little bit of leverage. Yeah, it'll probably have some wicked grooves worn into it. Oh, I think this one will be quite grooved. Yes, sir. Years of that Vine Montana gravel road dust. <laughs> Must have a lot of turns there, probably in curvy country. <laughs> there we go. Oh, yeah, look at that. Just worn right down. Oh, man. See? Look at yeah. that. You can see where. Holy. Completely yeah. worn. The bottom is what takes the abuse, but you see this sipe right here? Yeah. That's where the lock pin fits up against, through this hole. Yeah, to yeah. keep the kingpin, to keep it, keep it in staying this way, stationary. And uh, so there's a kingpin. I'll just pull this spindle off. Just keep track of any shims, shims or bearings. So there's your thrust bearing that it rides against. Some of them run underneath. The early ones run on top. Uh, the truck seems to run underneath, so just keep in mind with that when you take it all apart. And uh, there you go. Really cool. Lots of original black paint. There on is that. lots of original black paint. I imagine it'll clean up like like tickety boo. Another thing to look at with these early ones is these balls. Make sure they're still around, and these are. So we're in good shape. So yeah, pretty straightforward. Clean the grease. Clean the grease and we'll get some kingpins put in it. All right, well, we got our spindles cleaned up. And uh, this is what we call a sympathetic restoration, so just gonna do the bare minimum. This is nice original paint still. And one thing to look for when you're uh, checking your spindles is uh, make sure that the bottom bushing hasn't worn completely out into the edge of the spindle. Oh, yeah, Sometimes, yeah. and then also check your bearing race uh, areas to make sure they haven't spun bearings, but uh, I don't think it's ever been really apart, so pretty nice, neat. Nice, nice. Uh, pretty neat. There's the original type grease nipples, see? Oh, all cleaned up. Yep. And you'll see these are still round, still spherical. When they get worn, they turn into like an oval. Oh, yeah, so we're flattened out. So we're in good shape that way. And then just to show you something that's kind of interesting, here's the old uh, kingpin. Let's give it a quick wipe here, you can see it. You can see how worn that is. See? Oh yeah, look at the grooving on oh, that. But check that out right there. Oh. 
That's your original equipment right original there, my friend. Forward part. So that's probably original to the truck, so kind of neat. Did a pretty good job. Another thing that's kind of interesting is these are 1932 Ford car spindles. As you can see, they're pretty dainty, comparatively. Oh, yeah. But they're not all that different. There's a kingpin difference there, hey? But uh, first things first is we're going to put it in here, and we will uh, knock the bushings out. Got this beautiful old, uh, love this old snap-on uh, bushing driver, so let's say. There it is. Do the same thing three more times. Just like that. Just like that. Save that to for the reinstall. Okay, let's go consult some uh, parts. See if we can the find parts a set. To parts. There you go. How about this? Let's have a look here. Years ago, we bought a bunch of parts and didn't think we'd ever need them, but uh, there they are. Kingpin set for Ford. I think it's B-3111. 3111 is the uh, Kingpins. But anyways. They are new old replacement stock kingpins, which I believe will do the trick. Because they had a little bit of, uh, you know, just shelf wear, just took a little bit of Gibbs and some Scotch Brite. We just clean off the, just clean off the surface. Right, there's nothing here. It's just to polish them back up. As you can see, they come nice, ready for install. Showing it against this one. We'll just see the lack of wear here. Oh yeah, he's grooved right in there. Yeah. And then that they are the same indeed. Yeah, no tricks, no voom. Yeah, no tricks. And then these are the, the new bushings. The old bushings, very much the same. See how thin that was getting? It's ready to go through, oh, yeah, you see? Yeah, look at that. See, once you go through the bushing, then you start to go into the uh, spindle, and then yeah. you gotta just start doing some welding, and oh, holy man, cow, the there you go, so. yeah. So. What we're gonna do is drive them back in. We use the same bushing driver we used to drive them out. Yeah. I know uh, they're split bushings, so they go in pretty easy. And then they are undersized, so we'll use a reamer and we'll ream them out. Another thing, uh, a lot of guys, uh, I've done it myself. Make sure your grease hole is lined up with your grease nipple. And this should just be the exact opposite of what we just did. Quick measure, one inch exactly. So, because we don't have a one inch exactly reamer for these babies, we'll bring these out. Yeah, oh, it's probably good to splice it. So, we don't have a one inch exactly reamer, but we have, boy, we should be sponsored by Antique Blue Point, eh? Oh, that would be nice. Wouldn't it though? We have these. Adjustable reamers. Oh yeah, the whole kit and caboodle. And this was in here when I got it, so I've just always left it. Just thought it was kind of neat. This part of the junk you got to move out of the way to get to the reamers. One inch. So what do we got here? 985 to one and a sixteenth. One sixteenth of an inch bigger than we need. Yeah. And these are piloted reamers. They're special for uh, kingpins and, and the like, like bores, because how it works is you. It keeps them parallel. Get a good feel where we're at here. Alrighty. Hey, got my cutting oil in there. I'm gonna do a light cut and then the final cut. So let's get that lined up in there nice and clear. Make sure it doesn't hit the vise or anything when you're putting it in. <laughs> and I'll just uh, go light here. A 
pull it out. Filing out of there. There you can yeah. see the finish Beautiful. that gives. Yeah. Just do the final cut. It's a light grazing. There we go. It should just be slight. Nice. That's where you want it. And there's no play at all. So we'll get the bottom one cut and then uh, back on the truck to go, I guess. Yeah, off to the races. <laughs> the green elevator. <laughs> Alright, the fitment of the kingpins. Beautiful. That's what you want. Yeah. It should last better. another 90 years or so. Okay, well here we are. We're going to put the uh, kingpins back in. Put the spindles back on. I've got, uh, Jim did a beautiful job here cleaning, as you can see. Quite a bit of original black paint yet. Once we clean off this dirt, look at that, isn't that neat? Beautiful. And the uh, grease more or less worked as a preservative, didn't it? So those are those beautiful grease nipples there, those original ones. That probably are pressing. At any rate, we've done Got our spindles correctly fitted. Look at that. Look at that black paint on there. Oh. That's original paint. Sympathetic restoration, that's where it's at. This is the corresponding uh, left hand side in order to keep the brake actuator correct. We're going to slip that kingpin into that axle, keeping it square. And then I'm just going to throw our thrust bearing in there that we repacked. And it's in perfect shape. Look at this. Absolutely no play. Slight drag. That's what you want. We're going to use the original kingpin locks because they're in perfect shape. This goes in like so. And then you just there. It just keeps that locked. There it is. Restored. Huh. Ready for part two? Yeah, exactly. Ready for breaks. Or stay tuned for part two. Or what do you yeah, want to yeah. do? There? Join us in the next video yeah. when we look at the breaks. The breaks, yes. <laughs> there we go.